temperament. Temperament refers to individual differences in behavioral styles, emotions, and characteristic ways of responding. It's your predisposition towards emotional reactivity and self-regulation. What I mean by emotional reactivity is how quickly and intensely a person responds to their emotions. For instance, an infant with high emotional reactivity might give a big hearty laugh when they uh, find something amusing or scream and cry loudly if there's something they don't like. An infant with a low emotional reactivity might just give a quiet chuckle or a mild whimper. Self-regulation involves variations in how much or how well someone is able to control their emotions. For example, maybe when you get mad, you get really, really mad, but if you have high self-regulation, you're able to control that anger and not say or do anything foolish. Chess and Thomas proposed a classification of temperament based on three types, easy, difficult, and slow to warm up. An easy child is generally in a positive mood, has a relatively consistent or predictable routine, and adapts easily to new experiences. So they're generally chill most of the time, and you can generally predict their needs, such as when they'll be hungry, when they'll be sleepy, etc. And if things change, like daylight savings time or switching to a new child care provider, they're fairly good at rolling with it. A difficult child tends to react negatively and cries frequently, engage in irregular daily routines, and is slow to accept change. So it's harder to predict what they will need and when, and things are emotionally rough when you need to make any changes to the daily routine. A slow to warm up child has a low activity level, is somewhat negative, and displays low intensity of mood. So they're not as adaptable as the easy child, but not as intense about it as the difficult child. Instead of putting children into categories, Rothfer and Bates classified temperament in terms of where individuals fall along three broad dimensions, extroversion slash surgency, negative affectivity, and effortful control, which is just another term for self-regulation. Extroversion or surgency refers to how bold, active, and cheerful a child seems to be. Negative affectivity uh, refers to a child's tendency to be fearful, frustrated, sad, or uncomfortable. Effortful control refers to a person's ability to keep their arousal level from getting too high and have strategies for soothing themselves. So again, you might feel really, really angry on the inside, but instead of, instead of yelling or starting a fight, you might walk away and do something to help distract you from the encounter. Temperament has been linked with our physiological characteristics. For example, someone uh, whose body responds with a more rapid heart rate and higher cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, are more likely to exhibit more reactive temperament styles. Temperament is moderately influenced by heredity. Children inherit their physiology, which predisposes them to have a particular type of temperament. However, temperament can also be influenced by gender and culture. Through caregiver responses and through immersion in a culture which values certain temperament styles, children learn to modify their temperament style to some degree. As a parent or caregiver, it is important for you to remember that your child may have a very different temperament from you. You have to keep this in mind when placing certain environmental demands on your child. For example, you might have another child who is adventurous and eager. You might barely slow your car down and that child might tuck and roll out of here and disappear through the front door while waving goodbye on the first day of school. However, maybe your next child is slow to warm up and is nervous about the first day of kindergarten. If you try to drop them off and drive away like you did with the first child, they're going to have a nervous breakdown and they'll be having a miserable time at school because their anxiety level is through the roof. With this child, you will want to take the time to take them on a tour of the school before the first day, go to meet the teacher day, carefully go over what their daily schedule will be like, and walk them to their classroom every day during the first week. 
Just because you don't think it's necessary because you wouldn't be bothered by something doesn't necessarily mean that they don't need it. Pay attention to what the child needs and be sensitive to those needs. It will be harder to parent a difficult child because you're teaching more coping mechanisms and taking more time to make adjustments, but it's worth it. The child will feel more secure and capable and they will establish a better relationship with the parent. Speaking of relationships with others, the next topic we'll discuss is attachment.